everybody. Today is my video day for my video friends that like to just only watch videos. But of course, everybody is welcome here, everybody. So, since I'm not reading, I don't guess I need my reading glasses. I hate to wear them anyway. Uh, I've been really just as heavy hearted as a lot of you over losing one of Summer's Army, Nana's Angels, and um, it's just so sad. It's so sad. I watched her last live and she had no idea. She had no idea that that was coming. Of course she didn't. And it breaks my heart to go back now and look at the live and listen to her say, well, email me that tomorrow. You know, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. You know, send me that and I'll look at it tomorrow. Things like that. It, it just shows that we have no idea, y'all. We have no idea how much time we have left in this world. We need to get along. Everybody needs to get along. And everybody, it would be nice if everybody would pick up where Nana left off with the things that she was working on in Summer's case. I felt like she was getting really close to solving some of the confusion in the case. I feel like she had worked so hard to get that far. I feel like we should continue that on for her. I think she would want us to continue to prove the best we can that what she was saying is correct. And I believe, I believe 100%, I believe she's correct. And so my heart goes out to her and my heart goes out to the family, her family, her friends, subscribers, her mods, her mods were her best friends. And I see by being on YouTube, I see that it's easy to get attached to people in this case that you work with closely in Summer's case. And whether that be your mods or just people in your chat that you're used to seeing in your chat all the time or a lot in emails and so I have uh, one subs I have one friend I don't know if she's still on here because I haven't been back on for very long um, but we used to talk on the phone for hours we never met and summer has brought a lot of people together Summer Wells has brought a lot of people together. We wouldn't have known Nana if it wasn't for Summer. We wouldn't know each other. We wouldn't know our chat the way we do, our mods the way we do. I feel a closeness with my subscribers and with people in my chat. My mods are like my family and I just appreciate all of you so much and I don't say it enough. And I just wanna make sure that I am saying it enough that I understand how difficult Summer's case is. I've been through it. I've been through it all just like y'all have. I've been through the ups and downs. I've been through the tears. I've been through the high hopes and then through the disappointments. I've been through the being bullied and harassed. I've been through the people trying to stop me from talking about summer. 
I've been through it with y'all. So I do understand how difficult it is as I know it's difficult as a viewer to watch, especially when you see creators that you like or love arguing and fighting. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking in a very heartbreaking case. This case, this case needs our full attention. This case doesn't need any more distractions. We need to all stay focused on Summer and her brothers. There is a court date coming up, I heard, in October. I don't want to say a date because I'm not positive. I think I have forgotten the actual date, even though somebody told me last night in my members, in my members' life, it was something teen, so it's the, like the middle of the month of October. They'll be going back to court, or they'll be going to court. And I'm hoping, and I'm think I'm pretty sure it is. I've heard that it is family court, and it's over the children, and that's bittersweet. It's so bittersweet because, on one hand. We want the best for the children, and right now, I think the most of us agree that the best thing for the children is to stay where they are because they're doing so well where they are. And we have seen that Don and Candace really have not made a big difference in their lives. And we don't want to see the boys be put back or summer be put back into their care for many reasons. They're not working on their selves. They're not working on their lives. They have refused rehab. They've refused the real help that's been offered. I hope, I hope that the boys don't end up going back into that home. And then on the other hand, it's really sad, it's so sad that a family, another family, because it happens all the time, another family has been divided and separated all because of using substances excessively and drinking excessively and it has ruined so many families and the children generally hurt so bad because it's not their fault but they want to be with their parents they love their parents anyway there's nothing that anybody could say or do in most situations that would make any child believe anything bad about their parents or think anything bad about them. Even children who have come out of some of the most horrible conditions, they still love their parents, love them. Love is real. And I'm sure, I'm sure the boys love their parents as far as Don and Candace's boys. I'm sure they do love them, but they don't want to go back to them. And that's what I've heard. And I believe that that's true. That came from Candace to a friend and it was proven, it was shown on YouTube that the boys said that they were going to tell the judge they didn't want to go home. And to me, that speaks volumes because children generally want to go home. They want to be with their families. No matter how hard their life was, you can take them and make their life as easy as possible and 
give them a beautiful life, but they're still going to want their mama and their daddy in most cases. But in this case, this case, this case, y'all, this case, these boys don't want to go home. And it just tells me that it must have been a lot worse than what I think, a lot worse than what I know, for them to not want to go home and to be willing to tell a judge that. I hope that if they do tell the judge that they don't want to go home, I hope the judge, and I think the judge will, ask them why. What is your reason for not wanting to go home? What For not wanting to go back there? And I would like to hear that reason too. We probably won't get to hear that reason, of course, because that's juvenile court. But I'm very interested to know, so I would think the judge would be too, want to know why. Why don't you want to go back? That's your parents, and you don't want to go back to your parents? Could you tell me why? And who knows what each one would say. I would ask each child separately, and that way, you get each each child's reasonings reasons for not wanting to go back. If we knew that, it would tell us a whole lot more. We would have more insight as to how things really were in the home, which we know that it wasn't very good due to substance excessive stu substance abuse and excessive alcohol use and during that time was the beginning of the pandemic everybody everybody was stressed everybody was uncertain still to this day still to this day we are but it was worse back then it had to have been the last year, the last year of those kids' lives in that home must have been pretty rough, I would imagine, because during that time, there wasn't really much that you could get out and do. I'm a hiker, so I did a lot of hiking, a lot of walking, a lot of just spending time outdoors because that's really basically all we could do in our area for a while. And I imagine that the boys in summer went through that too. I, went, I bet they went through having to stay home and the, a lot. And the only time that they did get to get out was either when school was open to go to school or if Candace took them to some kind of water to play in. So their life must have been pretty boring. I mean, most a lot of kids have boring lives. If you ask kids, even the kids that have, you know, just almost perfect lives, they still get bored. But those kids didn't have a whole lot. You know, they did have their games. And I know how kids love their games. But I just imagine that they did spend a lot of time in that house. And I hope not the dungeon as much as the house. But we all saw the house. And just knowing what the house looked like, it's, it is heartbreaking to imagine four children trying to live in there. And especially the school children that were trying to get up and get ready for school. I can't imagine the chaos of where is this, where is that, I can't find this, I can't find that. 
because how could you? How could you find anything in there? The only thing I saw, really, I, that I, you know, that I could remember that the boys would even use was a big pack of toilet paper. <laughs> it's back when everybody was trying to stock up on toilet paper. I remember the shortage. <laughs> it's not funny. I don't know why I laughed. But that's probably, <laughs> it's probably why that was front and center. <laughs> because that was important at that time. But the rest, it just looked like unnecessary unnecessary clutter. When you have four children in a home, you have to have space, like living space. Space to do a homework, even if it's a small space. You know, they I didn't see where they really where they had any space for doing crafts, puzzles, uh, homework or pretty much really anything except for sitting at that table that was also cluttered and looking at the TV. That's not any life for four children to live that way. They didn't have a refrigerator inside the home. It was out in the front yard with bullet holes and it's still, as far as I know, that refrigerator is still sitting out there full of bullet holes. But they, they did finally move it over by the shed instead of right beside the house and the, where it was. And that was one of the kids' toys. That was one of the things that Summer played with was their refrigerator that was sitting outside. And inside, they had a hotel size refrigerator for seven people, including Grandis. So... I guess that would be why they would buy food each day. I heard that Candace would buy frozen pizzas from the dollar store every day for the kids' dinner. I guess that would be because she couldn't store very much food in their little refrigerator. And all they had was like a toaster oven. Or a microwave or something like that. No stove. That's not a way for children. For children. That's just not going to accommodate the needs of four children. And I don't know if they ever got a real full-size appliances in that house or not. I haven't heard that they did. But I think that would definitely be required for a family that size. And especially if you're leaving the children home alone, such as like Candace said she did, nobody in, nobody out. And, you know, a refrigerator that's not big enough to hold enough food for the family. It's sad. It's just sad. And so th those are the reasons why I hope that on this court date in October, I hope they, the judge will decide that it's really not in the children's best interest for them to return back to that house. And I think that if they were released to go back to that house, I think there would be such and out poor from the public of questions and anger and just tons of things. There would be so many mad, mad, mad people because there's, there's thousands and thousands of people following this case very closely. And they even get mad when another person takes their own, their child up there. Imagine if their own children were released back up there. Imagine what we the people would do. And I say we the people because I would be 
one of those people that would be definitely protesting that. And so that's something that we have to think about, you know, we got to think about that's coming up in October. It was supposed to be in August and unfortunately it got pushed back to October, but everything, not everything, but most things I believe happens for a reason. And I don't know what the reason is, but it has put a lot of pressure. Something has put a lot of pressure, I believe, on Donna Candace. I think that's why we've seen uh, a lot of what we've been seeing out of those two lately. I think the heat is on. The heat is on. And it makes me wonder if they might be facing some charges on that court date that's coming up. I hope so. I see the need. From what I have seen of this case, I, I do see the need for charges to be brought up against both parents for a lot of things we've all seen. And we've all heard and we all know enough. We've seen enough. And it's enough, enough is enough of this case. I hope the judge sees that too. This has gone on for far too long. Nobody in the children's family is coming forward and speaking on behalf of the kids. And nobody is willing to adopt the kids in the family, in which that's probably for the best because I still haven't seen any good people in Candace's family. And I love Mary, Don's sister Mary, and I haven't met any more of Don's family. But my point is, is that the children don't have anybody fighting for them in their families. So we the people have to fight for them. We have to stand up for them. We have to fight for them. We have to be there. We have to oversee this and make sure that nobody drops the ball. Not this time. The, this ball is rolling again. We got a court date coming up. Things should be happening once this court date happens. I really do expect to see them in handcuffs on that court date. I hope to see some charges for things that happened while they had the children. It's only, it's only fair if you're going to charge other people for a crime then it's only fair to charge everybody who does that crime. Am I seeing favoritism? I don't know. I'm watching. I'm watching and a lot of other people are watching too. And so we're watching that ball and we're going to make sure that if anybody drops the ball again, we're going to be there. We're going to be right on top of it. We're going to keep that ball rolling this time. And when I say this time, I mean this last stall was because of a juvenile court judge, from what I understand. And I don't want any more people causing any stalls in this case or any more interference with this case. If, you know... I want it to be, I want the court case to be over so that we can see what happens next. I feel like the court date has to happen first. That's just my opinion. I feel like they're waiting for the kids' court date to be over, possibly to make sure that any rights to those kids from Don and 
of, for Don and Candace would be stripped away first and foremost. And that would need to happen. That would definitely need to happen if they knew that there were going to be some charges coming to put those parents away. They would want to make sure the boys were completely settled before doing that, I'm sure. And they're doing really good where they are, and I think they will continue to do well and, and succeed as long as we leave well enough alone. And I just hope the judge agrees with, with me on that, even though the judge is not going to see my video. <laughs> I hope we feel the same way. I hope we have the same opinions. And sometime down the road, you never know what might happen. Things could always change for the better. But in this situation, I don't have any hope for things getting better in the home life of Vero and 110 Ben Hill. I don't see that ever being a, a solution to any problems. It's not going to be there. Especially not for any children, in my own opinion. So that's all I have for today. I'm thinking a lot about the court date, and that's why this video is about pretty much that. I have a lot of high hopes again, high hopes that the boys' case will be settled, and then they can have freedom, freedom of not having to worry about ever having to go back into that lifestyle. And I know they do fear that. That's why they want to tell the judge that they don't want to go back. They fear, I believe they fear going back. I think it would take fear of them to make the kids not want to be there. And two, the fact that now they know what it's like to have an, to live in an average household, the way life should be. Meal planning, home cooked meals, a full-size refrigerator with a lot of groceries, healthy foods, plenty of it. They don't have to fight over the food anymore. They don't get left alone in the house full of clutter all day on a hot day in June. Think about it. Think about how it must have been for them. That's what I've been doing, thinking about how it must have been for them, for them to not want to go back. And I hope that by the detective saying at one point that the CPS case was bleeding over into Summer's case, I hope that this, getting this case with CPS solved or resolved and out of the way, I think then it could open up Summer's case to where they can move on and proceed with hopefully a circumstantial evidence case against the family of Summer Wells. And I'll just end on that note. Love you all and I'll see you soon.